here for 35 years to be in Santa Barbara Drivers Conference. And I'm glad to be here today having something to do with American 4 by 4 I don't know how to fill you in, but I don't know if you know much about me as a writer. I do not write my stories, my stories write me. Fahrenheit 4 by one began, but I didn't know it. Back in 1950, I went for a walk with my friend on a Blizzard Boulevard restaurant. It came out at 10 o'clock, and we were walking on the boulevard, and a police car pulled up, and the police got out of the car, and came over and said, Sir, what are you doing? I said, putting one foot in front of the other. <laughs> he said, don't you realize there are no pedestrians? In that direction, 10 miles. In that direction, no miles. Bullshit Boulevard, not one pedestrian. I was walking with my friends. And the policeman kept talking to me. He was very upset with me for walking with the Boulevard. <laughs> and, and he talked to me. I took a package of soda crackers from my pocket. I put them in my mouth. I chewed on the soda crackers. And I sprayed his uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite know what I was doing with that bank now, Progressive. He rushed away, the cracker turned, he said, go home and don't do it. I said, yes, sir, I'll go home and remove my legs. <laughs> <laughs> so I got home that night, I sat down to his first story called The Pedestrian. I published it in the the Reporter magazine. And then a year later, when I was writing, I went to UCLA. I discovered they had a room down in the basement of the locker there where I could print a typewriter for 10 cents a half an hour. I needed to have an office. I couldn't afford to buy one. Here was one I could have for 10 cents a half an hour. So I moved in with a bag of dimes <laughs> and we had to write a new album. And, but the pedestrian and my typewriter went out for another walk. And in the night, he bumped into a girl named Clarice McClellan. And Clarice McClellan, this character inside my head, said to him, sir, I wonder if, if you are a you, but I think you are. He said, what? She says, I smell the kerosene on your uniform. You must be Montag, the man up the street with the burner of books. He said, I am. And then she kept talking, and she wrote Fahrenheit 451. <laughs> the very first version occurred because she talked to my pedestrian, you see. <laughs> and then in the next nine days, I spent $9.80 in dimes, and I wrote the first version of Fahrenheit 451 called The Fireman. It was published in Galaxy Science Fiction Magazine, and people liked it. And, but then back the book came to me, and said, Ray, can you extend your version of the fireman? We love the idea. Can you make it into a longer novel? I said, yes, I can. So I signed the contract with that. But we need a new title. I was curious to know, because nobody could tell me, what is the temperature and what paper burns? What paper burns? I called the chemistry department at UCLA. They didn't know. <laughs> I called the physics department at SC. 
They didn't know. I said, Debbie, 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 call the fire department. <laughs> so I called downtown to the fire department on Hill Street. I said, will you put the fire chief out, please? They said, yes, we will. So the fire chief came out. He said, what's the problem? I said, Mr. Fire Chief, tell me, please, at what temperature does book paper catch fire and burn? He said, we'd work there. So he went away, and he came back, and he told me, book paper catches fire at the temperature of 451 degrees Fahrenheit. I said, that doesn't work as a title, but if I reverse it to Fahrenheit 451, I've got a title for the book. That's how it happened. The fire chief gave it to me. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs>